శ్రీ సచ్చిదానంద సద్గురు సాయినాథ్ మహారాజ్ కి జై ది వండర్ఫుల్ లైఫ్ అండ్ టీచింగ్స్ ఆఫ్ శ్రీ సాయి బాబా అడాప్టెడ్ ఫ్రమ్ ద ఒరిజినల్ మరాఠీ బుక్ శ్రీ సాయి సచ్చరిత్ర బై గోవింద్ రఘునాథ్ దబోల్కర్ అలియాస్ హేమాత్ పంత్ ఇన్ ఇంగ్లీష్ బై నాగేష్ నగేష్ వాసుదేవ్ గుణజీ చాప్టర్ ట్వంటీ త్రీ యోగా అండ్ ఆనియన్ షామ్నా క్యూర్డ్ ఆఫ్ స్నేక్ బైట్ కలరా ఆర్డినెన్స్ బ్రోకెన్ ఆర్డియల్ ఆఫ్ గురు భక్తి ప్రిలిమినరీ ఇన్ రియాలిటీ దిస్ జీవా హ్యూమన్ సోల్ ట్రాన్సెండ్స్ ది త్రీ క్వాలిటీస్ దట్ ఈస్ సత్వ రజస్ అండ్ తమస్ బట్ బీయింగ్ డెల్యూడెడ్ బై మాయా హీ ఫర్గెట్స్ హిస్ నేచర్ విచ్ ఈస్ ప్యూర్ కాన్షియస్నెస్ నాలెడ్జ్ బ్లిస్ అండ్ థింగ్స్ దట్ హీ ఈస్ ద డూవర్ అండ్ దస్ ఎంటాంగిల్స్ హిమ్సెల్ఫ్ ఇన్ ద ఎండ్లెస్ మిజరీస్ అండ్ డస్ నాట్ నో ద వే ఆఫ్ డెలివరెన్స్ ద ఓన్లీ వే ఆఫ్ డెలివరెన్స్ ఈజ్ ద లవింగ్ డివోషన్ టువర్డ్స్ ది గురూస్ ఫీట్ ద గ్రేట్ ప్లేయర్ ఆర్ యాక్టర్ లార్డ్ సాయి has delighted his uh, bhaktas and transformed them into himself his nature we regard sai baba as an incarnation of god for reasons already stated but he all, he always said that he was an obedient servant of god though an incarnation he showed people the way to behave satisfactorily and to carry out the duties of their respective stations varnas in his life in this life he never emulated others in any way nor asked others to have something done for him for him who saw the god in all mobile and immobile things of his world of this world humility was the virtue none he disregarded or disrespected for he saw narayan lord in all the beings he never said i am god but that he was a humble servant and he always remembered him and always uttered allah malik god is the sole proprietor or owner we do not know the various kinds of saints how they behave what they do etc we only know that by god's grace they manifest themselves in this world to liberate the ignorant and bound souls if there be any store of merits in our account we get a desire or interest in listening to the stories and leelas of the saints otherwise not let us now turn to the main stories of this chapter yoga and onion once it is so happened that a sadhak of yoga came to shirdi with nana sahib chandorkar he had studied all the works on yoga including the yoga sutras of patanjali but had no practical experience he could not concentrate his mind and attain samadhi and even for a short time he thought that if shri sai baba will be pleased with him he will show him the way to attain samadhi for a longer time with this object in view he came to shirdi and when he went to masjid he saw sai baba eating chapati with onion on seeing this a thought crossed his mind how can this man eating stale bread with raw onion solve my difficulties and help me sai baba read his mind and said to nana sahib oh nana he who has the power to digest onion should eat it and none else hearing this remark the yogi was wonderstruck and he fell at baba's feet with complete surrender with pure and open mind he asked his difficulties and got their solution from baba thus being satisfied and happy he left shirdi with baba's udi and blessings shama cured of snake bite before hemat pant begins the story he says about the jiva that it can be very well compared with a parrot and that they both are bound that one in the body and other in the cage both think that their present bound state is good for them it is only when a helper that is guru comes and by god's grace open their eyes and liberates them from their bondage from their bondage that their eyes are opened to a greater and larger life compared to which their former bound and limited life is nothing in the last chapter it was shown how baba anticipated the calamity that was to befall on mr mirikar and rescued him from it now let the readers hear a story more interesting than this one sharma one shama was bitten by a poisonous snake his little finger was bitten and the poison began to spread in the body the pain was also severe and shama thought that he would pass away soon his friends wanted to take him to god vithoba where such cases were often sent but shama ran to masjid ran to the masjid to his vithoba sai baba when baba saw him he began to scold and abuse he got enraged and said oh while bhatur dhya priest 
do not climb up beware if you do so and then roared go get away calm down go get away come down seeing baba thus red with wrath shama was greatly puzzled and disappointed he thought that the masjid was his home and sai baba his soul refused but if he was driven away like this where should he go he lost all hopes of life and kept silent after a while when baba became normal and calm shama went up and sat near him then baba said to him don't be afraid don't care a jot a small amount the merciful fakir will save you go and sit quiet at home don't go out believe in me and remain fearless and have no anxiety then he was sent home immediately afterwards baba sent tatya patil and kaka saheb dikshi to him with instructions to the effect that he should eat what he like should move around in the house but should in no case lie down and sleep needless to say that these instructions were acted upon and shama got all right in a short time the only thing to be remembered in this connection is this the words of baba or the five syllabled mantra that is go get away come down were not addressed to shama as it apparently looked but they were a direct order to the snake and its poison not to rise up and circulate through shama's body like other spell words in mantra shastra he had not he had not to use any incantation charged rice or water etc his words only were most efficacious efficacious in saving the life of shama any one hearing this story and other similar ones will pick it firm faith in the feet of sai baba and the only way to cross the ocean of maya is to remember the feet of baba in the heart cholera epidemic once cholera was raging virulently in shirdi the residents were much frightened and they stopped all communication with the outside people the panch of the village five headmen assembled together and decided upon two ordinances as a remedy to check and put down the epidemic there were no fuel cart shall be allowed to come in the village and no goat should be killed there if anybody disobeyed these ordinances they were to be fined by the village authorities and punch baba knew the that all this all this was mere superstition and therefore he cared a damn for the color ordinances while the ordinances were in force a fuel cart came there and wanted to enter the village everybody knew that there was dearth or scarcity of fuel in the village still the people began to drive away the fuel cart baba came to know of this he came to the spot and asked the cartman to take the fuel cart to masjid none dared to raise his voice against this action of baba he wanted fuel for his dhuni and so he purchased it like an agnihotri fire worshipper keeping his sacred fire alive throughout his life baba kept his dhuni every ever burning all day and night and for this he was always stocked with fuel he always stocked the fuel baba's home that is masjid was free and open to all it had no lock and key and some poor people removed some wood from there for their use baba did not grumble about this baba saw that the whole universe was pervaded by the almighty and so he never bore enmity or ill will to anybody though perfectly detached he behaved like an ordinary householder to set an example to the people ordeal of guru bhakti let us now see how the second color ordinance fared with baba while it was in force somebody brought a goat to masjid it was weak old and about to die at this time fakir peer mohammad of uh, malegon alias bade baba was near sai baba asked him to behead it with one stroke and offer it as an oblation this bade baba was much respected by sai baba he always sat on the right side of sai baba After the chilim pipe was first smoked by him it was then offered to baba and others after the dishes were served at the time of taking meals at noon baba called bade baba and made him sit on his left side and then all part to cough the food baba paid him also daily 50 rupees out of the amount collected as dakshina baba accompanied him 100 steps whenever he went away from masjid such was his position with baba but when baba asked him to behead the goat he flatly refused saying why it should be killed for nothing then baba asked shama to kill it he went to radha krishna maya and brought a knife from her and placed it before baba knowing the pers- uh, purpose for which the knife was taken she recalled it 
Then Shama went to bring another knife but stayed in Vada and did not return soon. Then came and turn, uh, then came the turn of Kaka Sahib Dikshit. He was gold, no doubt, but had to be tested. Baba asked him to get a knife and kill the goat. He went to Sate Vada, Sate Swada and returned with a knife. He was ready to kill it at the Baba's bidding. He was born in a pure Brahmin family and never in his life knew killing. Though quite averse to do any act of violence, still he made himself bold to kill the goat. All the people wondered to see that while Bade Baba, a Mohammedan, was unwilling to kill it, but this Brahmin was making preparations to do so. He tightened his daughter and with a semicircular motion raised his hand with the knife and looked at Baba for the final signal. Baba said, What are you thinking of? Go on, strike. Then when the hand was just about to come down, Baba said, Stop. How cruel you are. Being a Brahmin, you are killing a goat. Kaka Sahib obeyed and kept the knife down and said to Baba, Your word is law unto us. We do not know any other ordinance. We remember you always. Meditate on your form. Obey your day and night. Obey you day and night. We do not know or consider whether it is right or wrong to kill. We do not want any reason or discuss things. But implicit and prompt compliance with Guru's orders is our duty and dharma. The Baba said to Kaka Sahib that he would himself do the offering and killing business. It was settled that the goat should be disposed of near a place called Takiya where Fakirs used to sit. Then when the goat was being taken to that place, it fell dead on the way. Hemat Pant closes the chapter with the classification of disciples. He says that there are, three, there are of three kinds, first or best, second or average and third or ordinary. The best kind of disciples are those who guess what their gurus want and immediately carry out and serve them without waiting for an order from them. The average disciples are those who carry out the orders of, of their masters to a letter without any delay. And the third kind of disciples are those who go on postponing the carrying out of their order and make mistakes at every step. The disciples should have firm faith backed up by intelligence and if they add patience to these, their spiritual goal will not be distant. Control of breath, ingoing and outgoing or hatha yoga or other difficult practices are not at all necessary. When the disciples get the above mentioned qualities, they become ready for further instructions and the masters then appear and lead them on in their spiritual path to perfection. In the next chapter, we will deal with Baba's interest, interesting wit and humor. Bo to Shri Sai, peace be to all. This I master.